started. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time today to come together and hear a quick, what we hope will be a brief but informative summary of our accreditation report. Um, you know, I want to start by saying that uh, you, you can get a sense, I think, from some of the emails that we put out and we reinforced the emails with many of you how important it was to come today. And we're going to spend a few minutes in a full explanation, but I kind of like to, in situations like this, um, give us the punchline and then back up and talk a little bit about the story. Um, and I, I do want to tell you one of the reasons we felt it was so important to gather us all together here today, as many of us as could come and share this information before we broke for the four-day weekend, is that we did get our um, final accreditation report from the ACCJC Commission, and we did not get the views that we had hoped for. What I want to do very quickly, though, is give you a quick, because I know a number of us have had a number of people ask me, you know, remind me again how accreditation works. So I just wanted to remind you that the accreditation is a cyclical process. You all know that. Typically, it happens every six years, with the opportunity then for intervals in between those six years to either be required to provide additional reports, follow-up reports, progress reports, etc. Um, if you do great in your accreditation, you get reaffirmation. You get a reaffirmation, reaffirmed as an accredited institution. And those are the types of reports that we all strive to try and achieve. If you don't do that as well as you would like, and very few of us are perfect, everybody gets typically some form of recommendation, then you move into their levels of sanctions. And just uh, to remind you that, um, that the sanctions kind of go in a progression as well. Sometimes if you're not uh, meeting a certain uh, standard or the area of recommendation fully, you may get issued a warning. And if you remember, many of you who worked on our 2006 accreditation, we had a number of recommendations there where we were issued a warning to make those better and to make those improve. And then we had some interval reports. We had reports in 2007 and in 2008, and we had a midterm visit three years in, in 2009. And at each of those points, we were showing progress toward addressing those issues that we had originally been issued a warning for. After a warning, if you're um, still not doing well, or if you're doing uh, substantially uh, below the standard, you can be imposed probation. You can get placed on probation. Probation is kind of putting the college exactly that on probation, and then you're uh, expected to respond more quickly, and you're expected to uh, correct those um, deficiencies more quickly. And what probation means is that you deviated significantly from the standards that the commission has established. And then finally, the most severe level of response is is an order called show cause. And what the commission can do is they can ask any college or institution to show us cause why you should remain an accredited institution. That's pretty far over on the edge. And that happens when an institution is found to be substantially non-compliant in its eligibility requirements, its accreditation standards, or the commission policies. So those are kind of the, the levels. Uh, and then obviously at the end, nobody likes to think about this. They can terminate your accreditation. So the um, ACCJC is an arm of the WASP Accreditation Commission, which is um, an arm of the federal government. So they're here, they are the accrediting body which uh, governs and lends the credibility to public institutions, in our case colleges, community colleges, and universities. I know that sometimes there's a debate out there about whether or not the ACCJC uh, oversteps their bounds or whether they're uh, motivations are um, politically motivated or whether or not they're um, doing more than they should do or being over involved in their role in terms of trying to govern and measure institutions. That argument may be out there. There were emails earlier this week from our faculty circulating like that, that there might be a move afoot in Sacramento to have legislation to challenge the ACCJC and so on. Those are all political realities that exist. But I guess the one thing I want to reinforce for all of us is the ACCJC is right now the accrediting commission that we rely upon to make sure that as an institution, we're accredited. And no institution wants to lose their accreditation because if you're a non-accredited institution, by default, you've separated yourself from the CSU, the UC system, the eligibility for funding. Without an accreditation, we're not a legitimate public institution. Regardless of our opinions, 
really about the, the motivations of the role of the ACCJC. And if those things change in the future, great, we'll change with them. But I don't think it's our prerogative right now um, not to comply with what the law of the land is today as we speak. So I touched on this in those comments right there. We had an original visit back in 2006. We did have a, a number of recommendations for which we were put on warning. We had a warning with a follow-up visit report submitted in 2007. We then had a progress report that we submitted in 2007. And then we had an accreditation midterm report in 2009. And we showed progress all along the way from those warnings we got in 2006 toward eliminating those warnings and becoming fully compliant and accredited again in 2012. First of all, I want to thank everybody who worked on our 2012 accreditation, in particular the steering committee and the group of faculty who pulled together to put the information in place and to compile the report and submit it. We submitted that report, we went through the accreditation this fall, you're all very much aware of that. I shared this in a number of different meetings that I've been in when the accrediting team was here. I don't know how many of you had the, the chance to interact with them. Um, they were very thorough. They spent lots of time with us. They asked a number of questions. Um, and, and I was still relatively new. Remember, I'm brand new July 1st, and so I didn't have history of the last six years. I, I wasn't able to participate in the last six years. So in many ways, as I was going through the accreditation interviews, and they were asking questions and I was in the room, I was learning the answers to those along with the accreditation committee. And I do know that there were um, a number of key areas where I didn't feel like we were able to answer their questions completely. And that's why I believe we ended up with the set of recommend recommendations we did when they left. So you'll remember they met with us here in this room in October, after a week, they gave us three commendations and they gave us seven recommendations. And in those seven recommendations, there are a number, in fact, I counted them at lunch today, there are 28 individual standards that were not met, fully met, in those, in those seven recommendations. Um, so then they submitted the report, the report went to the commission, the commission met in January. I had an opportunity to talk with Barbara Bino, who serves as the chief executive for the ACCJ was, I mean, uh, commission. And um, in preparation for the commission to hear our report, uh, she had a phone conference with me. She said, you know, Stan, because you're new and because uh, a lot may have happened from the time you were there in October until now, January, you may want to exercise the option that presidents have to appear before the commission when they're actually reviewing the report and offer supplemental information. And I thought, you know what, that might be a good thing for us to do. Because if you remember in October, we were in a fairly stressed place. I mean, it was the pre-November election. There were a lot of things we were working on. You had, a, you had a new president. You had a difficult budget. We were in prolonged negotiations. We had not produced a lot of work in terms of committee work and uh, curriculum and student learning outcomes. And I wanted to share with them that since that time, progress has been made. And uh, since the passage of the November election, some of the stress has been lifted. I wanted to remind them that in between 2006 and 2012, we did some pretty remarkable things as an institution. I mean, we built two new campuses. We have the top nursing program in the state. We have an excellent police academy. We have strong vocational programs. These are all things that really speak well to all of the aspects of College of the Sequoias. I think what what happens though is while those programs are really strong, they're not directly aligned with what the commission um, accredited, accreditation standards are. And so those standards are measuring all of the other parts of our institution, and there's, there's some misalignment there. So even though we have great programs, they somewhat stand alone relative to the accrediting team, which is measuring those processes across our institution. So I took the opportunity to call in. They didn't, uh, they, their meeting was on the same day as our January convocation, so I couldn't be up in Sacramento. But they arranged for me to talk to them via conference phone. I got on the phone. I talked with the commission members while they were sitting at the dais with our report in front of them. And I gave the explanation that I had just given to you. 
about the quality of our programs and all the fabulous things we did in that six year period. And yes, while you came to College of the Sequoias in 2012 of October, and there may have been um, you know, some sense of, of work not getting completed and things slowing down, you don't accomplish everything that we accomplished in the last six years without there having been some periods of harmony and pretty good work. So let's pay attention to that. And they were receptive to that, but I will tell you, and I've shared some of, with, with this with some of you in other meetings, I, I left that meeting, and Dr. Lucerna was in that home conference with me when we hung up. The tone of the questioning from the commissioners and kind of their, their attitude and how they asked us their questions was pretty interrogative. And it didn't leave me with a good feeling. But at the same time, I wanted to remain hopeful, and I have remained hopeful. So then we were just waiting for the final report. Um, you know that when our visiting team left here, they told us that um, they were very proud of all the work that we've done. And um, they only submit the report. That visiting team is not the commission. And so um, I asked uh, Dr. Vino that. I said, you know, our visiting team left us with the impression that there are a number of excellent things at College of the Sequoias. And she said, there are. But the accrediting commission will measure your, measure your campus against the standards. So um, we have our report, and um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to read it. It's only a page and a half, and um, I'm not going to list all the numbers because there are they're several, but I'll, I'll reference those when we get to it. And then after I read the report, I'd just like to make a few closing comments. Um, so it came to us dated yesterday afternoon. The Accrediting Commission for Community and Junior Colleges, Western Association of Schools and Colleges, at its meeting of January 9th through the 11th, 2013, considered the Institutional Self-Evaluation Report, the report of the evaluation team, which visited College of the Sequoias October 8th through the 11th, 2012, and the comments made by the college representatives via conference call at that meeting, the call that I referenced. The purpose of this review was to consider College of the Sequoia's application for reaffirmation of accreditation and determine whether the college meets eligibility requirements and accreditation standards. The commission found that the College of the Sequoia's was in substantial non-compliance and that it failed to meet a significant number of eligibility requirements and accreditation standards and failed to address five recommendations and resolve associated deficiencies identified with the institution at the time of its last comprehensive evaluation in 2006. The commission acted to order show cause and to require that the college complete a show cause report by October 15, 2013. That's eight months. They'll be back one year from the original visit. The report will be followed by a visit of commission representatives. College of the Sequoias is also required to prepare a college closure report by October 15, 2013, which is to be submitted with the institution's show cause report. The accredited status of the institution continues during the period of show cause, but reaffirmation of accreditation will not occur until and unless the institution addresses all deficiencies and is found to be in substantial compliance with all eligibility requirements, accreditation standards, and commission policies. Show cause is issued when the commission finds an institution in substantial non-compliance with the commission's eligibility requirements, accreditation standards or commission policies, or when the institution has not responded to the conditions imposed by the commission. What Barbara told me in the phone conversation was that we were deficient in both of those areas. We not only met, uh, did not meet some of the standards, but we didn't comply with the fact that we said we would meet them from 2006, and we weren't able to sustain that. In these situations, the commission will require the institution to show cause why its accreditation should not be withdrawn at the end of a stated period by demonstrating that it has corrected the deficiencies noted by the commission and is in compliance with eligibility requirements, accreditation standards, and commission policies. 
In the case of a show cause action by the commission, the burden of proof will rest, rest on the institution to demonstrate why its accreditation should be continued. So our task going forward now is we have to show, based on how quickly and how clearly we can re respond to these deficiencies, why we should remain an accredited institution. A loss of accreditation will likely cause an institution to close. Then during the show cause period, the institution must make preparations for closure according to the commission's policy on closing an institution. College of the Sequoias is therefore also required simultaneously to prepare a closure report. Show cause was ordered for College of the Sequoias for deficiencies associated with eligibility requirements 10, 13, 19, and 21, and recommendations 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, each of which was also identified by the 2006 Comprehensive Evaluation Team. The Commission notes that the faculty at the institution stopped work on a number of academic issues critical to institutional quality during recent years, and that this failure was related to the campus climate and issue identified and addressed in the 2016 report, and again in the 2012 team report. The commissioners wish to convey their strong sentiment that regardless of differences among parties at a college, all staff must work to assure academic quality and support student success. The show cause report of October 15, 2013 should provide evidence and explanation of how the institution meets the standards and eligibility requirements identified in the 2012 evaluation team report. These include, and then it goes through, all 38 of the standards. I'm not going to read those numbers. The report should also demonstrate that the college is in compliance with the eligibility requirements in the key areas 10, 13, 19, and 21. Unless the commission finds during its January 2014 meeting that the college has met its burden to demonstrate that it's in full compliance with the above reference standards and eligibility requirements, the commission will act to terminate your accreditation effect at the end of the spring semester 2014. For specific reference to the eligibility requirements and accreditation standards that COS was found by the evaluation team and the commission not to meet, either fully or partially, the institution is referred to the evaluation team report that connects each of its findings, conclusions, and recommended recommendations to the applicable eligibility requirement or accreditation standard. The college is urged to very carefully review the entire report and use it as a basis for developing and enacting strategies to come into compliance with the accreditation requirements immediately. <coughs> All of this information is and will be online. I wanted to make sure we met here today and have the chance to talk about it, at least here, for those of us who are here, before it hits the news. A show cause order is the most extreme response we can get. I'm not going to over-dramatize it. We're not going to use it as any kind of a lever or a hammer. Um, <coughs> It is what it is. And again, what I'm asking is for those of you who may have some question about the validity of the ACCJC and the work that they do and whether or not accreditation is valid or not, I'm going to ask you to please set those aside for now. Let's, let's worry about that eight months from now when we're accredited again, because that's the law of the land. And we don't have time. We don't have time to decide if we want to do these things anymore. There's things that are mandated in the law that will fell far behind on. The key areas as you read through these are going to be very clear for you. We're behind other community colleges in the full implementation of student learning objectives, or student learning outcomes. And we're not just behind in the development of outcomes, we're behind in the development of the outcomes. And the next requirement is that there has to be an assessment that measures those outcomes. And then the final requirement is that you have to give the assessment and you have to use the data to revise, modify, redirect your instruction, and then start the process over again. The good news is right now, none of that goes public. None of that's part of an evaluation. What's part of the evaluation is do we commit as a faculty to student learning outcomes? Do we assess those learning outcomes? And do we use the data to improve our instruction? But lest you fear that we're going to be collecting data on how well students do in an English class, 
or a science class, that's not what we're talking about. We're really just talking about agreeing on what the learning outcomes are that we're going to teach in our courses, building an assessment that we all think we can give to measure those outcomes, and then giving the assessment. And then taking the results and meeting together and saying, hey, based on how those results came out, sure, there's an element of that we're going to be able to justify based on students, but there's always something we can learn in that data about our instruction. And we make some adjustments. That's a big piece of what's in here. The other really big piece of what's in here is our inner workings as a college, our participatory governance structure. What they came and they saw is they saw disconnected structures. We have good structures. We have an academic senate. We have a college council. We now have senior management. We've established a dean's council. We have a series of committees appointed by academic senate. But what the kind of questions they were asking is, where's, where's a chart or an explanation that shows us how these all connect? What happens? How does something get decided? How does something move through a process? And while we may know how that happens, and, and it may be kind of slow compared to what the accreditation standards are, they couldn't even really find out how it happened. And the individual reports, when you read them, will show you that different accrediting team members visited different factions of our participatory governance and got different explanations of how it worked. So that's an area it seems like we can pull together and say, look, we know these are the components that are part of the decision-making process. Let's figure out how they work and how they connect to each other. And let's be able to explain that and use that more effectively. I've been learning just as co-chair of College Council. College Council has representatives from all of the committees appointed by Academic Senate. I started the year asking each of them to come in. I didn't ask, it was part of our bylaws. We ask everybody to come in and show us your committee's purpose statement. Review your purpose statement. Remind us as a college council, what does your committee do? How often do you meet? How do people get on your committee? How does the college faculty as a staff know about that committee? What does the committee do? And those were the very questions that the accrediting team were asking Steve Lamar and I when we sat in a meeting one day. And I was only here a few months. I didn't know the answers to some of those questions. Steve gave as much history as I could. But I think Steve and I both left there feeling like that was, good. That was not complete enough. And so I think they probably visited the committees. And in some cases, by October, committees hadn't even met yet. Like, not once. And some committees had met. Some had bylaws. Some had stuff. Some didn't. So it was that, that inconsistency. We don't have anything that codifies or shows the connection between those structures. That's on that one. And the other key area in here, and you'll see it, you'll read it. Um, actually, let me, see, let me say this. The two, two areas that we did well in, and I'm, and I'm proud of these, the two most common areas for districts to get sanctioned right now, for colleges to get sanctioned, are in their budget, because everybody's dying statewide, budget-wise, it's looking a little better now because they're struggling, so they're not able to manage their fiscal abilities. And the other end of the continuum, 50% or more get sanctioned for their board, their, their board of governors, their, their um, elected board of officials. And the good news for us, I think, is we didn't get ma major recommendations in either of those areas. They commended us for having put together a, a fiscal solvency plan. Our budget's not balanced. But they said, man, we can, we can see documents, we can see reports, we can see board agenda items, we can see the board reviewing it, we can see action to approve it. Yeah, you're going to take the action steps to make sure your budget's balanced. And on the other end, they commended the board for their governance. Our board really is a good board. They're not dysfunctional, they don't micromanage, they're not out in the community bad-mouthing us. Those are all the things going on in other colleges. They looked at our board and they saw a board that meets regularly, they have good minutes, they have good agendas, they take actions in support of their faculty, in support of their administration. They pass general obligation bonds, they built two new campuses, you can't do all that without good governance. So that part of it was good. The two areas where every other college is getting scolded, we did well. This issue, you guys, this is an internal issue. This is about how we work together. And that to me, as uncomfortable as all of this is, <clears throat> I'd rather be trying to solve relationship and structural decision-making problems than saving ourselves from bankruptcy 
or working with a dis dysfunctional group of elected officials out of control. Because this is us. So here's our next steps. There's, this is new territory for all of us. The board policies and the administrative procedures that we have on um, accreditation and accreditation committees and so on are not in effect now. Doesn't mean we're going to abandon the concepts, but we have to act differently. So I'm appointing an accreditation response task force. And um, that task force primary responsibility is and it's going to be a cross section of us. We're going to need people willing to work on this. We're going to need people willing to step up. We're going to need people who care about wanting to save the college. And I'm assuming that's all of us. Nobody wins if we don't make it out of this. So we're not going to make this an opportunity to fight the place blame. And I'm going to be really disappointed with anyone else or any faction that does. But that's on you. We're going to work to save the college. Appoint a task force, representative group of us, have that task force, take these recommendations, break down the standards, and begin to find solutions for those immediately. When you think about it, it's already February. They're going to come and visit us in October. By convocation in August, we need to be submitting a report. That leaves us about three months, and then there's summer. So we're under the gun. And this is serious. In addition to the task force, which will engage us in many ways in the, in the college community, it says here that we have a commitment during this show cause period to keep our public informed. Because even though we don't think of it like this very often, the public does own us. Go to the coffee shop every once in a while, they'll remind you of that. They do own us. And so now while we're under show cause, we have to have regular communication updates to our public. So in addition to the task force that will work as, as kind of the nucleus of our campus-wide effort, I'm going to appoint a community, a WASP, I mean a, an accreditation community advisory committee. I think it's critical right now that from our three major cities, Corcoran, um, Hanford, Tulare, Visalia, okay, four, that we get representatives from the community to come in and meet with them every two weeks or so to give them status reports and updates. Because they'll be the folks who are reassuring the community of the work we're doing. If we don't share our news on this process, we will be subject to how the Times Delta reports the news. And by the way, we wanted to meet with you today because you know what that's gonna look like this weekend. So we wanna get together and we wanna have a community advisory committee that will be a part of the process. If that frightens you, then that says something about you because the community is the people, are the people that we're responsible to. And then of course our board is gonna be in the loop. And so we worked this morning in senior management to kind of put together the three parts of the plan. It's gonna break itself down into um, some small working groups, but I, I can't imagine anybody in the campus not being affected by this. And what we have to do a better job of than what we've done in the past is we have to communicate to everybody. We have to involve all of you. The one thing I want to say is there's nothing in this show cause order or nothing in an accreditation report that gives us the authority to undermine or circumvent our collective bargaining agreements with our unions. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to take a path that collides with the bargaining agreement. We are going to read the collective bargaining agreements, however, and we're going to follow the language that's in them. And honestly, one of the challenges that I've had personally in working with our, our teachers association is that we both read the contract and we interpret it differently. And I tend to look exactly at what the language says, and I'm often, I'm often um, have an explanation to me of what the language means. Well, I read it and say this is what it says. That's, that I don't read it and try to define what it means. And so that's where, that's where we have collided a little bit. So we're going to continue to read the language and interpret exactly what it says and not violate the contracts. But we also don't have time to be in meetings asking permission or negotiating 
critical changes that we need to make, but the language clearly doesn't prevent it. So we'll work on that. That's, that's just an issue that's out there. But in the public report that we submit, we put out, here are the key players, right, in the process. It's going to be the faculty, which I would believe is primarily, you know, academic senate and faculty at large. It's going to be the uh, administration and the staff. Our classified staff will be a critical part of this. And it's going to be our employee associations, our unions. They're the big players. So if in our weekly reports to the community, we're putting an activity report out there, we're going to say, here's what the task force is doing. That's your faculty, your senate, and your staff. Here's the administration and classified. And here's the activity of our associations. So I, that's the way we're going to report it publicly. And I guess what I'm going to say, in, in all due respect, is we, we can't be stopped. If you're going to file grievances, file them. If you're going to file lawsuits, file them. We have five months. So the, the association stuff will be important. It's one folder over here on the desk. But we got to say, punch. I know that sounds a little bit abrupt, and I apologize. But the point is, you know, we'll, we'll list that activity, we'll show everybody, here's what the task force is doing, here's what your staff and administration is doing, here's your union update. We're going to show everybody so that we all know what the activities are that we're engaging in. We have to pull together on this, bottom line. And if sharing information with our public is the way that we do that, then we do that. But we have to pull together. I don't think we're in a situation now where any of us can sit in the middle in a crisis like this, we're either part of the solution, or by default, we're, we're, part of the, we're part of the challenge. We're slowing the solution down. So we're not asking anybody to pick sides, we're just saying, you know where we're coming from, because we need to get this work done. Um, when I had the opportunity to first meet all of you at Convocation, I think you'll remember we used a little movie as a metaphor. And we put Apollo 13 up on the screen, and at that time I was thinking, you know, we're in this budget crisis. We're, we're, you know, we're having to figure out if we're going to remain solvent. And um, I was really worried about that, and it's still a high priority for us. But I can remember looking at that movie, thinking, you know, we started out on, on one path here, thinking things were going to be a certain way as a college and as a statewide institution, and then all of a sudden the budget cuts and the economy crashed and everything changed. And all of a sudden, it was different. We were having to adjust on the fly. And I was thinking the budget crisis was going to be the worst thing that would ever confront College of the Sequoias. And now I can honestly say, this is the worst thing that would ever confront College of the Sequoias. So the metaphor is still after low. If we were in, uh, in the lunar module right now in Apollo 13, we're not going to the moon anymore. And because we're not going to the moon, we've got to figure out how to save our life. And I'm asking all of you to pull together and do that. We're going to make that our clear focus. We're going to make that our clear focus. Everything else outside of that, it's going to exist. It's not going to get a bunch of our attention. This is too important. And I hope you appreciate that and respect it. You may not like it, but I think that's what's necessary. And I'm asking all of you who are willing to participate with us to step forward and help us make that happen. Okay, I think it's um, time to let everybody go and spend a little time digesting this. Know that all the information is available online. If you go to ACCJC website, or actually right about now, it'll be posted on our website. Recognize that there's going to be a media blitz. You can count 100% on us, administration and board. This is not going to be a whoop and dog for us to place blame on anybody. The report is what it is. The newspaper will read it, they can read it for themselves. What we're going to say is what I just said to you. We're here to save the college. We believe that there's things we do at College of the Sequoias that are fabulous, but they don't align right now with the, with the accreditation standards, and we have to get ourselves aligned. Once we get ourselves aligned, we're going to be okay. And that's the work that we're going to do. Nobody's fault. Not our last steering committee, not the faculty, not the union, not the administration. And really, if you want to place blame, go ahead. It doesn't matter. So, as we go forward, 
Um, we're asking for your help. Read the information. Be prepared to answer the call. When your colleagues come to you and say, these are the committees we're being asked to be on, this is the work we're being asked to do, will you help us? Um, know that we're going to have a little media blitz. Know that you can count on your board and administration not to use that as an opportunity to hurt anybody. Can't speak for others, but I can tell you, you won't get that from us. And then um, take a little time to let it all sink in and um, come back next week and hope that we can start to pull ourselves together. I know some of you have your opinions about COS e-news and, and some of you, you know, discard them automatically, you know, for whatever reason. Please read your COSE news. That's the main mode of communication we're going to use for our updates. And um, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. I will say this. Um, in just the seven months that I've been here, I don't think I've ever met a more talented group of faculty and the people I sit in academic senate meetings regularly in all of the intellect and the exchange that takes place. If we can solve some of the problems we've solved so far, I have to believe we can do this. Our community is counting on us. It's an 85-year-old institution, and, and this is where I'm going to let this go. When I came to College of the Sequoias and we were talking about the budget, remember me saying we're not going to let the college fail. I just didn't know we'd have to prove it. Thank you for your time today. If you have further questions, you want to come down and ask?